Hey, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about where to start when your home feels really messy and out of control, and it's probably the last place that you would expect. When my house was the messiest it had ever been, I felt like I cleaned more than ever. I spent the first 30 years of my life drowning in clutter. It wasn't full hoarders with cats, but it was bad. And no matter how hard I tried, it always got messy again. It felt like the next day, overnight, right? And I was on this vicious cycle because I was starting in the wrong spots. I thought you had to start cleaning your house in the really visual areas, so anywhere that company would see. So I was focusing on the living room and the kitchen. And the problem with that was those spaces get messy really fast, but also they're filled with other people's things too. So I felt like I was always picking up after my family, picking up after my husband. I felt resentful that no one was helping me. And again, overnight, it seemed to be messy again. So I was like angry and I saw housework as this really negative thing. And I stopped cleaning as much as I should have because every time I did, it felt like I was being disrespected by my family. So how did I change? How did my home change? I changed where I focused. I changed where I started. And I started cleaning my bedroom first, which is bananas because nobody sees the bedroom, right? Company doesn't see the bedroom. The bedroom used to be where I hid everything, so company didn't see. But it's mine. It's the first thing I see when I wake up and the last thing I see when I go to bed. And when I made my bedroom a priority, even if the rest of the house was a disaster, something changed up here. I started having more self-respect. I started realizing that I wanted a clean house for me and that it's not about picking up after other people. It's about, I deserve this. And focusing on my bedroom and nothing else, just making sure that everything was picked up and it was tidy and it felt like a retreat, changed my mindset and made the rest of my home cleaner too. So now let's walk through the steps of creating your dream bedroom. And I use the dream acronym because I love acronyms. So the first step is dirty clothes. It's just getting all the dirty clothes out of your bedroom, picking them up off the floor, take the laundry hamper out, start a load of laundry. Even if you don't have time for laundry, just getting the dirty clothes off the floor instantly makes your space feel so much better. And the next step is R for reset. And what I mean by this is resetting your bedroom back to like factory gorgeous, putting all the clean clothes away, taking anything out of your bedroom that doesn't belong and putting it where it does belong, clearing off the top of your dresser of things that don't belong, just resetting your bedroom, making it feel perfect. This isn't about any deep cleaning. This is about making your bedroom a priority by resetting it right now. I'd like to take a second to thank Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. Birch makes organic, non-toxic mattresses right in the US. The mattress is made with just four materials sourced straight from nature, organic latex, New Zealand wool, American steel springs, and organic cotton. Birch has a 100 night sleep trial and a 25 year warranty. When we unboxed this, I was actually surprised. It's rolled up quite small, but it is such a huge, substantial, solid mattress. It's firm yet soft, and Joe and I are loving it so far. This mattress also keeps me cool, which I absolutely love. Sometimes I overheat at night. I'm getting old, you guys. And it came with two free pillows and free shipping. You can go to birchliving.com forward slash clutterbug to get $400 off your mattress and two free pillows and free shipping. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. The next step is E for emptying trash. Not only the trash can that you have in your bedroom, if you don't have a trash can in your bedroom, you need to get a trash can in your bedroom, but trash inside your dresser, inside your bedside table drawers. You probably have old receipts or something in here. And trash in your bedroom is like, it's like a symbol, right? It's a small thing. Even if you don't see it, having trash in your bedroom is like, I'm not really into like energy woo woo thing, but I'm telling you, clearing out the trash does something. It makes you feel better about your space. So grab a trash bag, grab a bag for recycling, and get rid of anything that doesn't belong. 
The next step is A for air it out. And obviously I mean opening up the curtains and opening up the windows, but also stripping your bed, washing the sheets, and giving everything a good dust and clean, freshening up your bedroom. I don't know why, but sometimes bedrooms get like a funk. Is a funk the right word? Like a skunk, like a skank. It feels, you're sleeping in here all night. You know what I mean? They can smell a little bit and they can get dingy and dirty. It should feel like a hotel. So open up those curtains, dust your lamps, clean your bedside tables, vacuum under your bed, air out your bedroom, freshen up your bedroom. And again, make this a priority. It doesn't matter what the rest of the house looks like. You only have to clean your bedroom right now. And the last step is M for make your bed. Make your bed, pull up the blankets. If you're not a pillow person, you don't like decorative pillows, that's okay. But how can you make your bed feel luxurious? Treat yourself maybe to some new sheets, new bedding, even a new mattress. Your bed is where you spend almost half of your life half of your life, at least eight hours a night. And if you're like me, you spend time watching movies in your bed. It doesn't matter. The point is, it should be a priority. Your bed should be a priority. It should be a treat to crawl into it. And nothing feels better than crawling into a beautifully made bed at the end of a long day with crisp, clean sheets. I know starting in your bedroom might feel counterintuitive. You are probably embarrassed about the state of your home and no one's gonna see your bedroom but you, but that's the whole point. We have to stop thinking of cleaning our house as something we do for other people, something we do for our husband or our kids or our friends or neighbors or company that might stop by. This is for you and your bedroom is such an important space for you. It's your retreat. And I want you to really think about making it a priority for 30 days. I want you to give this a try for just 30 days. Stop stressing about the state of the rest of the home and just focus on every single day resetting your bedroom, making your bed, making sure it's dust free, getting out the dirty clothes, putting the clean clothes away for 30 days because this amazing thing is going to happen. It's going to change up here. It's going to change how you feel about yourself and your home and cleaning. And it's going to feel less like you're picking up after people and more like you're doing something for you because you deserve it. You deserve a restful, beautiful bedroom. And what's going to happen is that mindset shift is going to trickle into the rest of the house. And you're going to start feeling like, you know what? I deserve a clean kitchen. And you're going to start doing it without thinking, without it feeling like you're climbing a mountain, right? Because that's what happens when we're feeling resentful about house cleaning, when we're feeling negative about the fact that we have to pick up and clean and vacuum and dust and do dishes and laundry. We get in this headspace of it's this horrible thing and we've built it up to be such a monumental task that we feel exhausted before we've even started. And so where do you start? Where do you start when your house feels like a disaster? You start changing up here and you stop making it a big mountain to climb and instead just realizing that it's a gift to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're feeling inspired to make your bedroom a priority today and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Okay, this is a weird one, but I have to ask if I'm the only person. I, it's summer. It's hot. I'm also getting older, so I'm having some hot flashes, but I cannot just sleep with just a thin blanket or a sheet on top of me. I need like a heavy blanket or duvet, but then I'm really hot. And sometimes I can stick a leg out, but I can't put more than a leg. Do you know why? Freddy Krueger, my friends. Not just Freddy Krueger, but ghosts, monsters, axe murderers that could break in. I don't know why my brain tells me that a heavy blanket will protect me against blades and demons, but my brain tells me that. I need to have like a blanket on me to fall asleep. Please tell me I'm not alone. I don't know if that's because I'm traumatized as a child. I was six years old and I was watching Nightmare on Elm Street when I shouldn't have and I was like peeking around and the babysitter was watching it and then my parents caught me and then my stepdad thought it would be hilarious to say through the vent at night, Cassandra, it's Freddy, don't fall asleep. I'm blaming him for that and my inability to sleep without heavy blankets on me, but maybe I'm not alone. It is a weird thing to think that a sheet 
is not enough to protect us from like an axe wielding murderer, but a blanket. We're good. We're all good for some reason. A scary paranormal ghost, you know, that's gonna levitate you out of the bed, that can happen if you only have a sheet on. But if you have a blanket, you're fine. It's full protection. This is what my brain tells me. I have no idea why. But anyways, let me know in the comments below if you also need more blankets when you sleep because you're scared of unknown entities. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys next time.